Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, TSP, the spiritual philanthropist. I am Rav Shiva. This is the Daily Sutra, and here we have Condoleezza Rice, guys. I've actually never liked her until now, because now I actually understand a little bit of who she is, what she stands for, why she is the way that she is. I did not know. And this is the hard thing, is that you can't just judge a book by its cover. I'm guilty of that, too. But listen to what she has to say, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind. No joke, I'm not even kidding. Just listen to it, okay? First of all, let me be very clear. I said at the time, January 6th was wrong. Mm -hmm. I called it an assault on law and order and an assault on our democratic processes. So full stop, it was wrong. Uh, law enforcement will uh, determine what happened there, and uh, those who violated the law ought to be punished. Now, I, I think what uh, Senator McConnell may be referencing is, yes, it's time to move on in a lot of ways. I'm one who believes that uh, the American people are now concerned about their, what we call, kitchen table issues, the price of gasoline, inflation. We ought to move on to the next generation, uh, the, the move, move ahead and uh, deal with the American people's so issues. You, it's, it's really politically expedient for, for Mitch McConnell to say, let's move on, let's move on. The problem is that past will become prologue if we don't find out exactly what happened January and 6th. And we will. So it's not, yeah. it's not time right we, now. We will, we will find out. We, we but must I, find we out will before find out. moving on. We will find out. But I'm yeah. going to tell you, I live in California, not Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And the American people do have other concerns that we ought to be thinking about I, and talking about. Respectfully, and Madam so, Secretary, I think... Well, the, let, me, let me finish mm -hmm. now, Sonny. I also know that as a government and as a country, we've got to be concerned about the things that are making life hard for Americans and hard for American families. First of all, parents ought to be involved in their their children's uh, yes, they education. Should. Their children are in school seven hours. That's a very formative period. And uh, I think parents ought to have a say. We used to have parent-teacher conferences. We used to have PTAs. There are lots of ways for parents to be involved, and they should be. My parents never thought I was going to grow up in a world without prejudice, but they also told me, that's somebody else's problem, not yours. You're going to overcome it, and you are going to be anything you want to be. And that's the message that I think we ought to be sending to kids. One of the worries that I have... I just want to say that um, uh, Sunny and Whoopi, probably, and many of them there on The View have a different uh, opinion from what Condoleezza Rice is saying. I've never really un knew anything much about Condoleezza Rice except that she looked like just this very conservative person and, you know, she had her own political views here and she worked, you know, with the White House and... I already had bad thoughts about that, but listening to her here and what she's saying is being empowered by her parents. And let me tell you, if you have parents that empower you as a child, instead of try to, sh most parents that, or my parents, I want to say, <laughs> you know, try to strip away the power that you have instead of empower you. And there are people that don't understand how to empower others. The only power that they thrive on is stripping away your power. And, and it's a sad thing. We live in a world where there's quite a bit of that. That goes with a lack of education and a lot of insecurity and low self-esteem and a bit of narcissism. So, you know, what she's saying, she was blessed with very good parents. You'll hear this very common theme in a lot of the people that are able to fight through adversity and to actually be successful. You'll hear this very, very... Uh, uh, it's a very common, common idea that, that is, uh, a part of this entire picture here, but let's, uh, let's listen to what she has to say. Hold on. About the way that we're, we're talking about race is that it either seems so big that somehow white people now have to feel guilty for everything that happened in the past. I, I mm -hmm. don't think that's very productive or black people have to feel disempowered by mm -hmm. race. I would like black kids to be completely empowered, to know that they are beautiful in their blackness, mm -hmm. but in order to do that, I don't have to make white kids feel bad for being white. It goes back to how we teach. I just want to say that, yes, I'm very impressed with what she just said. I also believe the same thing is that you don't have to uh, degrade another uh, race to empower your race. You know, I mean, I really wish across the board that people would get beyond the idea of just race 
and the physical attributes of a person and see the internal characteristics of who that person is because the majority of people that have changed the world in good ways and in bad ways, I guess, it really was dependent upon the character of who they are, you know? And uh, that's a very, very powerful statement that she just made. I have to say I'm very impressed with her. I don't know how how the rest of the view feels about it, but I can tell you I am totally blown away by it. It's the history. That's what I'm saying. We teach the good and we teach the bad of history. Yes. Yeah, but right. what we don't do is make seven and ten-year-olds feel that they are somehow bad people because of the color of their skin. We've been through that, yeah. yes. and we don't need to do that. Okay, what she's talking about is extremely important, and the reason is that she said, you know, 10-year-olds at that age, you know, their minds are still developing, right? So whatever you set as the foundation in their mind on a certain topic, you know, whatever you tell them will be a foundation, actually, and you're creating those foundations. So if you're a parent, it's just like uh, when you have a pet, whatever you teach them as they're a puppy they're gonna have embedded inside them this goes all the way back to trauma guys and uh they found out that because we are beings that were created through a genetic uh i guess uh system system of genetics uh and we are predisposed even to sickness whether it's physical or mental the reason i say mental there have been studies done recently in genetics uh that predispose you to trauma in certain ways a lot of the times that you see a lot of people who are afraid and who have a lot of anger or who get addicted to certain, uh, like, let's say, alcohol or drugs or whatever, they're predisposed to it because of their parents. So that tells you something. That tells you something very valuable, that what we do and how we treat others, which is the golden rule again, uh, I don't have to mention his name, but uh, you guys already know, you know, the golden rule is extremely uh, valuable and important uh for the survival of your ma of humanity and how we treat others really starts at home you know that, that that's exactly where it starts and you know to have that that uh basic fundamental down and to practice it and to practice it in such a way that your children learn from it so they understand the fundamentals and the values of being able to treat others the way you want to be treated teach them respect teach them uh courteousness teach them compassion uh, teach them understanding but if you are a person that is always angry and irate your children will turn out angry and irate it will be a very hard thing for them to get rid of as they get older i was a product of this myself in many different situations growing up in foster homes as well where there was plenty of adversity there which they didn't ever actually recognize up to this day they don't recognize it um this can create a desensitization with anyone it doesn't have to be uh white people with black people or black people with white people with anybody that's put into that category to that situation it can create desensitization towards whoever is the one that's suffering with adversity because the people that are dominant in your life when your kids really are the adults the people that are older than you so very valuable lesson there like i said you can look at it genetically you can look at it from a uh neuroscience uh, point of view which is also genetic in its essence you know and uh the reason it's important as well is that there's something called epigenetics which is like the axon of you know if you look at uh, the axon of a nerve is like the outer sheath of a nerve right so let's say uh with the dna uh, helix there's a sheath like an axon of some sort but it's an epi uh, genetics is what they call it that sheath actually is formed in real time with real experiences now that's also a very important part as well but I believe that if the foundations within you are set correctly the parameters by which you act and and behave and react are set correctly that you will be able to get by without much conflict like the path of least resistance that's why i say this but i let's go back to what uh condoleezza rice is saying and now whoever this person is here and let's listen but i just uh had to throw that in there guys say it feels worse now when we're talking about race or well, it just it feels look, like it, a divisive it, look, environment it, it sure doesn't feel worse than when i grew up in jim crow alabama okay mm -hmm. so let's drop this notion that we're worse race relations today than we were in the past really that means we've made no progress, really. And so um, I think the hyperbole 
about how much worse it is isn't doing us any good. We still, have, well, this country is never going to be colorblind. We had the initial original sin of slavery. Mm. It's still with us. So for people who say, you know what, it's top down. It starts with the president. It starts with the words uh, oh, that he speaks. Oh, oh, come on. All right. Um, I would be the first to say we need to watch our language about race. We need to watch that we don't use dog whistles to people who, but when we start saying, oh, you know, it's, it's worse today. No, they're not. Man, I have to admit that Condoleezza Rice definitely, definitely impresses me. Um, I really never had a chance to hear her uh, views on any of these topics, but she's correct. Um, you can't say that today is worse than it was before. A lot of the people that are saying that were born in the last 20 years or so. And uh, if you've been around as long as I have, and obviously Condoleezza Rice has, you'll know that when I was a child growing up, there were actually places in Texas where there were signs still up saying that no whites allowed. You know, they actually had those signs up that were left there. Um, I remember in Brooklyn when I was a kid, I was supposed to go to Jones Beach uh, here in New York. I think it's called, what was it, Jones Beach or so something like that. Uh, Breezy Point. It's called Breezy Point. That's what it was, Bree Breezy Point. And uh, that's by Far Rockaway, I believe, somewhere close to there, if I'm not mistaken. And I was supposed to go with uh, uh, my friend who happens to be white and his family. But when he asked his father, he came back and told me later, he goes, look, I'm sorry, um... I don't think it's a good idea if you come with us. I said, why? You know, because we were only about nine years old at the time, me and uh, my friend Glenn Eaton, and uh, he lived down the street from me. And he says, well, they just, you know, there's really nobody that looks like you there, so it just wouldn't be a good thing to bring you there. And and at that time, at that age, I felt kind of bad. And, you know, I, I just felt really depressed. I still talk to him. We're still friends. And uh, it was just something at that time that you knew, you know, that that, that was just the way it was. You know, that's just the way it is. And uh, years later, you see everybody there now, you know, so things have changed. But if you haven't been around but only 20 years, you don't know what those changes are. You know, you weren't there to see what the difference was. But things have definitely changed in so many different ways. And I do agree with that. We still have some progress to, uh, to make in, in certain areas. Like I said, my own life is a testament to that. Um, and I really think that there's just a lack of of uh, understanding and uh, many other components involved in that as well because we live in a world where everything is led by the idea of Hollywood and uh, what Hollywood's uh, ideology is, is, you know, you have to be a one-man killer and go around and solve your, all your problems with a gun. I totally disagree with this. I think that it's a cheap way out of dealing with the actual problems themselves. It's very easy for anyone, even a child, to pick up a gun and to go out and solve his problem, but they never get solved. It just creates more problems. It's much harder to sit and have to think about how to solve that problem. It's like doing math, guys, you know. And uh, speaking of that, I got to get some rest tonight so I can. Uh, I'm in the physics program at ASU, and man, it's hard because you know the math part of it has been really difficult for me. But guys. Thank you if you are paying attention, if you're watching my videos. If you know my story, look at my videos. In each and every one, I put something there to kind of get, give an indication of what I've been going through for the last 20 years. And even recently now as they keep continuously trying to censor me, demonetize me in different ways. Not YouTube specifically. There may be a part of it. I don't even know. But, you know, the thing that sucks is that there are people... Who have power and that power is being abused that's another issue and i wish that i could get to speak to condoleezza rice i get to ask her opinion on certain uh subjects which i'd like to know from a person that has this clarity of mind on these topics so obviously there's a reason why she had the position that she did in the white house and uh now i have a lot more respect for her but guys i hope you enjoyed this video remember your uh your likes and uh when you subscribe to my video, it helps me and it helps the algorithms. If you know what I've been through, know what I've lost, and, and you hear my story, you'll see that I feel like whatever help I get right now is helping me to eat and pay my rent. I'm not looking anything for anything else but that. And uh, I don't want to have to beg anyone for it because I'm putting out products and, and, and putting out things for you guys. 
you know, and giving my opinion as a spiritual philanthropist. I know that my my point of view and perspective is effective. It always has been. And I hope that you understand. And I'd love to hear your feedback. I really would. Any comments, anything that you would like to hear me talk about, please put it in the uh, comment section. And you'll see a GoFundMe in the description. And you'll, if you go to the GoFundMe, you can read about what has happened to me in the last 20 years. And you'll understand uh, why sometimes I suffer with PTSD. And you'll hear me here cursing and yelling and screaming and just going through my my emotions, man. You know, that's all it is. I'm human. And I accept that. You know, that's my flaw. But guys, I'll see you soon. Stay safe. Use your minds. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.